Today we're going to be talking about rays, but before that I do want to do a little review. And also before that, I do want to quickly tell you guys about something that is going on here in the Florida Keys. Um, so last week we actually lost um, a young boy. His name was Pascal. Um, he passed away and what they are doing today is they are actually organizing a day of service in his honor. Um, so pretty much it's just encouraging people to go out today, do a random act of service, um, go do a cleanup. So today, um, this afternoon, I'm going to go out to a local beach and clean it up um, just in Pascal's honor. If you guys want more information about it, um, I've got one of my helpers that will post the link for the event page in the comments. And it's also in the info section of this video. But definitely, guys, um, if you don't have any plans today, you know, honor his memory. No matter where you are in the world, honor him. Um, he was a really great kid. He did a lot for the environment. He was a Boy Scout. He spoke to the city of Key West about trying to reduce our plastic usage. He was studying ocean plastics. Um, we actually had the honor of judging some of his science fair projects. So please, you know, honor him and his, you know, life today and go out and do a little cleanup or some, some sort of act of service to someone else and make the world a little brighter today. All right, give it a guess. Is a ray a fish? Yes or no? All right, we're almost split here. So the answer is actually yes. So rays are actually types of fish. Um, so let's talk about what a fish is. So by definition, a fish is gill bearing. So it has gills. It's an aquatic animal that does not have limbs or digits. It's ectothermic, which means it is cold blooded. They have a vertebrate, so they have a backbone. Now remember guys, fish are not jellyfish, shellfish, cuttlefish, starfish, crawfish are not types of fish. But guys, rays are fish, so are sharks, okay? So they're all different kinds of fish. I know when I say the word fish, you probably don't picture that. Uh, but that brings me into my next poll question. So sharks and rays are very similar. They're very closely related. So let me ask you guys this next question. So when we talk about fish, we have two main classes of fish. We have osteichthyes and chondrichthyes. Now, if you watched my fish anatomy lesson, even the shark lesson, you, would, you might know the answer to this one. So guys, go ahead and make your guess on this next question. Sharks and rays fall under which class? Osteichthyes or chondrichthyes? Give it a guess. What do you think sharks and rays fall under? So sharks and rays fall under the same class. Osteichthyes or chondrichthyes? All right, so guys, the answer is chondrichthyes. Okay, so again, there are two classes of fish. Um, when we talk about fish, we've got osteichthyes and chondrichthyes. Your osteichthyes are gonna be the fish that you probably think of when I say the word fish. So Nemo and Dory are osteichthyes. A snapper is an osteichthy. The fish that we dissected in that fish lesson was an osteichthy. Their bones are actual bones like what we have. So they have real bones like us. Your chondrichthys are your sharks and your rays, and they're made out of cartilage. So everyone go ahead and feel your ear for me. All right, so your ear is made out of cartilage. So is your nose. And your sharks and your rays have bones made out of cartilage. So they don't have bones like us, they have bones made out of cartilage instead. Another main difference between them are their gills. So your osteichthy fish, their gills are covered by an operculum. Again, if you watch that fish dissection, um, you, we saw the operculum. It's a hard kind of covering over it. So your osteichthy fish, like Nemo and Dory, you cannot see their gills. But on your chondrichthy fish, so your sharks and rays, you can actually see their gills. Another difference is how they go up and down in the water. Your bony fish, your osteichthy bony fish, like Nemo and Dory, have a swim bladder, which kind of acts like a balloon inside of them. And your sharks and rays, or your chondrichthys, have an oily liver. So really quickly, guys, um, I have two worksheets for you in the blog if you guys choose to use those. The first one is comparing bony fish um, to sharks and rays and things like that. So you guys can answer a lot of those questions right there with what I just told you. Um, 
And then the next worksheet is all about a species ID. I also just saw in the comments, um, which I forgot to address, but next week is our last week of these virtual science lessons. And then we'll be taking a break for a few weeks um, just to get prepared for our other activities. And um, then we'll go from there. So next week is our last week of these lessons as of right now, um, but we do have plans in the works for continuing them at a later date. So just, you know, stay tuned with us. All right, moving on. So rays are fish. They are more closely related to sharks, but they are all a type of fish. Now let's break apart sharks and rays. Um, so sharks rely on that oily liver for buoyancy, which means they rely on an oily liver to go up and down. Um, let's see here. And their gill slits are typically on the side of their body. So on your sharks, their gill, slit, gill slits are on the side. They are ovoviviparous, which means that they lay eggs and their eggs are inside of their body, but they also hatch inside of their body. Um, there are about 400 to 500 different species of sharks. Now, most shark species breathe um, by swimming forward, so they usually cannot stay put um, they can't not move because they have to constantly have water moving through their gills. And ways that sharks do that is they continuously swim or they open up their mouth and push water through with their mouth. Um, that's also what moray eels do. Moray eels are a type of fish and they push water through their mouth. That's why they always look so grumpy and angry, but they're really just trying to breathe. Um, but sharks breathe either by swimming forward or pushing water through their mouth. Certain species of sharks don't have to move at all. Um, they can just hang out and push water through their mouths. Um, if the current is strong enough, the sharks really don't have to move, but they have to constantly have the water moving through their gills. Um, they also swim fast and rely primarily on their caudal fin or their tail fin to make them move. So sharks rely on that back tail fin to help them move. Your rays are a little different. Um, so they do have an oily liver, but they don't rely on it as much as a shark, like sharks do. So as we know, a lot of rays actually hang out on the bottom underneath the sand. So they really don't need to be too buoyant if they're going to be down on the bottom. So they don't rely on their oily liver as much, especially certain ray species rely on it a lot less than other ray species. Um, their gill slits are typically on the bottom because guys, a stingray is very flat. So it wouldn't, they would not really be able to have their gills on the side. So stingray gills are typically on the bottom. Now, there is one little thing, I'm not gonna get too into it because I don't really want it to get confusing, but we also have something called skates. Um, so skates and rays are very similar, um, but skates are just a little smaller. They're also oviparous, which means that they lay eggs, and your rays are ovoviviparous, like your sharks. So they um, have the eggs inside of them and the eggs hatch inside of them, like sharks. There are 630 species. And the biggest thing with these guys is that they breathe using spiracles. So spiracles are these kind of holes right by their heads and it actually flushes water through their gills. Um, so we know a lot of these rays will actually stay on the bottom. So they can't really open their mouth to push water through like a shark would because their mouth is in the sand and they don't want to get a bunch of sand inside their body. So the spiracles on the top of their body actually pushes nice clean water through their gills so they can breathe. Also guys, rays don't have really a big caudal fin at all. They use uh, swim using their pectorals, so kind of like wings. So we can call them wings from now on if you want. All right, so guys, if you did our fish anatomy lesson, you might know the answer to this one as well. So these are really good review questions for you guys. This next poll question is, what body shape are rays? Are they compressiform, depressiform, or fusiform? What body shape do rays have? Compressiform, depressiform, or fusiform? What do you guys All right, compressiform, depressiform, or fusiform. You guys look very split on two of the answers. So guys, the answer is depressiform. So rays have a depressiform body shape. Everyone that's watching, do this for me. Say compressiform. So a compressiform body shape is very tall but skinny. So these are gonna be your angelfish, right? Um, again, tall and skinny, your angelfish, your butterfly fish, like this, or like a book. Now everyone, 
push down on the table or wherever you are and say depressiform. So your depressiform, um, a good way to think of it is that they're depressed, so they're kind of down and down about everything. Um, but your depressiform body shape are flat this way, all right? So they look like a dinner plate. They're not very tall and they're very wide. So your depressiform are flat, and if it helps you remember it, depressed, think about you're feeling kind of low, and they are usually found low to the ground. And if they're low to the ground and buried in the sand, it would be hard to have this body shape. And also, guys, finally, the fusiform body shape is the fusiform football fast, so like your tuna. Okay, so guys, they are that depressiform body shape, which means that their eyes are on the same side of their body, so on the top, because they're usually in the sand, um, so it wouldn't make sense for their uh, eyes to be underneath them. But their mouths are located down because most of their food is going to be located underneath them. So guys, their mouth is located on the bottom or underside of their body. And a really cool thing about these rays is um, when it's kind of time for mating season, the males of some ray species will actually have, their teeth will actually start to get really pointy. So male, certain species of male rays, their teeth will get more pointy than the female teeth um, during uh, mating season. And when it's no longer mating season, their teeth will actually get flat again. Um, most of these rays have flatter teeth to crush things, but when it's time for mating season, the male or the boy rays will actually get really pointy teeth. So that's kind of cool. All right, now I mentioned their spiracles, so I just want to talk about it again really quickly. Um, the spiracles are these small little openings right behind their eyes that help them breathe. It pulls in water and pushes it through the gills in their body, and that's how they breathe. Um, again, sharks usually bring in water through their mouth or have to constantly swim to get the water moving through their gills. Your rays, they can just pull the water in from the top of their head and bring it to their gills, which is underneath them. All right, so let me ask you guys this question. Are stingrays poisonous or venomous? What do you guys think? Are they poisonous or venomous? Now on Monday, I told you guys the difference. Let's see if you remember. I also see a little question saying, what do rays eat? Um, rays eat anything that are hanging out on the bottom. Again, it depends on the species. Um, some species eat different things, which I will talk about later. Most of your ray species will eat like crustaceans, crabs, anything hanging out towards the ground or in the sand. Because remember, their mouth is located on the bottom. So think about things that live on the bottom, and that's what your rays are going to eat. All right, guys, again. Are stingrays poisonous or venomous? All right, so the answer is venomous. They are not poisonous. Remember guys, poisonous is ingested, venomous is injected, okay? So like your lionfish are, are venomous, but as soon as you cut those spines off, you can eat the lionfish. Um, and people do eat stingray, and we're gonna talk about that at the very end of our lesson. But let's talk about the stingray, the sting part of a stingray. So that's actually called a barb um, or their stinger. So we call it a stingray barb. Um, I will, let me see. Let me look up a picture for you guys to help you guys kind of understand what I'm talking about. So a stingray barb, it's very skinny. Um, you guys can see right here. There you go. So that's what it looks like. It's pointed at the end. And as you can see, it's serrated. So kind of like a knife. It's serrated in one direction, so all those pointy things on the side go in one direction. So the stingray barb has sharp, a sharp point, serrated edges. It's made out of vasodentin, which is a type of thick cartilage. So think about your ears, but very thick, and that's what a barb is made out of. They can regrow the barb if it breaks, but it takes a very long time. Um, so what are some reasons why someone will get stung? Stingrays don't actively try to hurt you. They do it when they're scared and it's a reaction to go up. So typically people get stung when they step on them. Um, because again, guys, stingrays hide in the sand. So a lot of times when someone st steps on them and then they shoot the barb up like that and that's how they get stung. Most stingray barb stings are in, their, are in people's feet and ankle and leg region. Um, it's very rare to get stung in any other location of your body. Usually it's just in your feet and your legs because mostly people get stung because they're stepping, they accidentally step on the um, stingray. 
So guys, that does lead me to, I want to talk about Steve Irwin a little bit. I know you guys probably know who he is. Um, a, a lot of my students talk about Steve Irwin and the Stingray. So Steve Irwin's death was actually very rare. He was just the second death in Australia's history from a Stingray since 1945. So from when Steve Irwin died, then all the way back until 1945, only two Australians had died from a Stingray. Uh, barb. So it's very, very rare to die from a stingray. Um, your chances of dying from a stingray is actually less than that of dying from a shark. And guys, we already talked about that. You are not likely to die from a shark. Um, you're more likely to die from a vending machine than a shark attack. So your chances of dying from a stingray are very rare. Um, the only time a stingray is really going to put that barb up is if they're feeling scared and threatened. Um, and that's when they pull that barb straight up. So as long as you're not scaring it, they're just going to swim away. Um, they very rarely whip it back and forth. So guys, um, when you get stung by a stingray barb, um, there are a few things that you can do. So if you get stung in the head, neck, chest, abdomen area, anyone from like, you know, here between your head to your torso, definitely go seek me medical treatment. Go to the hospital immediately. Um, another thing about these stingray barbs is remember that they're serrated edges. So if you try to pull it out, you're actually gonna cause more harm because it's got all those points on it. So you should definitely go to a doctor to get it out like that. Um, if you get stung on your foot um, or somewhere like there, what you should do is soak the wound in warm water. So warm water actually kills the venom in that stingray barb. Um, so that is what you should do immediately is warm water and it actually kills the venom. Um, but one thing you guys need to do is make sure you're not having an allergic reaction. A lot of people, when they get stung by a stingray on their foot, they don't necessarily need to go to the hospital, but you may have an allergic reaction. So it's definitely important to monitor. If you feel any type of allergic reaction, you need to go to the hospital immediately. And another thing is if you get wounded by a stingray on your feet, make sure you don't cover the wound. You actually want to leave it open. You want to clean it and leave it open. You don't want to cover it. You don't want to get stitches on it at all. So that's another thing. If someone tries to give you stitches for a stingray wound um, and it's on your legs or down, that's not correct. Um, one easy way to avoid getting stung by a stingray is a stingray shuffle. So growing up down here, you learn that when you're a baby. What you do is when you're in the water, you shuffle your feet like this. You don't walk like this and stomp because think about it, guys. If you're stomping around, you can easily just stomp right on that stingray. If you shuffle, then it will actually scare off any stingrays. So if you guys are ever on the beach, um, make sure you're doing the stingray shuffle. It's a very easy thing to do. Um, just kind of shuffle your feet across the sand as you're going along and all the sand that you kick up and the movement in the sand will actually scare off the stingrays. So don't walk like this like you would normally do when you're walking on in the water in the beach. Make sure you're shuffling. That way you won't get stung. Pretty simple. All right, another thing I wanna talk about are their eggs. So um, your stingrays are ovoviviparous, which means that they lay eggs inside of them and then they hatch inside. But your skates, which are smaller versions of rays, actually have this really cool egg that you guys probably have seen before. Um, they're actually washing up a lot. I've seen a lot of pictures within the last few days of these guys. Um, so these are actually skate eggs. We also call them mermaid's purses. So um, a common name for them are the mermaid's purse. And this was actually an egg for a species of skate. A skate is very similar to a ray. They're just smaller. So again, guys, this is an egg sac. And in the middle is where the embryo for that skate would be. Um, the ones that are more fresh found on the beach, you can actually shine a light, a flashlight underneath, and you can see the baby um, inside of it. These are made out of collagen, um, which is a type of protein, and it takes about 12 weeks to develop. Um, if you find them on the beach, they're probably not gonna be able to develop after that. Um, they've, been on, they've been dry too long. They need to be in the water. Um, but guys, if, if you guys go out on the beach, I know a lot of you have been sending us pictures of identification. This is a mermaid's purse, otherwise known as a skate egg case. So those are really cool. All right, guys, so I want to go ahead and move into talking to you guys about different species of rays. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the Atlantic stingray. So the Atlantic stingray um, is common in the Gulf of Mexico. 
it's more spade shaped, so I'm trying to find you guys a good photo of it. All right, here we go. So it's more shaped like a spade and it's more of a brownish yellowish color. They're actually one of the smaller species of rays. Um, they live near the coast, so especially near the shoreline. They can also enter freshwater river systems. So the St. John's River actually has these guys in them. So these guys are stingrays. They do have a barb at the end of their tail down there. Um, so these are stingrays. It's the Atlantic stingray. They can enter freshwater rivers. They're smaller species. They're spade shaped. They live near the coast and they're brownish and yellowish. All right, the next one is the Southern Stingray. So the Southern Stingray is really cool. Um, these guys can actually get a lot bigger. They can actually get to have a wingspan of about five feet. This one, this is what it looks like. They are an olive color or a dark gray color. They're very common down here in the Florida Keys. We see these a lot. Um, you can see where their eyes are. All right, they have more of a diamond shape um, than the Atlantic. So the Atlantic is more spade shape. These are more diamond shape. Their tails can be twice the length of their body. So again, guys, these are very, very common species that we have here in the Florida Keys. All right, the next one are these fun little guys. They're really cute. Um, in the Pacific Ocean, they have something very similar called the blue spotted stingray we have here the yellow spotted stingray. So they're very small. They get no bigger than 14 inches. They live in shallower waters. So you find them a lot in the seagrass beds. They are a stingray, so they do have a barb. So you definitely don't want to mess with it and scare it. There we go. Um, they actually have 360 degree views. So their eyes can, three, can see 360 degrees. That darker spot that you see there, um, that's actually it's spherical. And a cool thing about the yellow spotted stingray is they actually can biofluoresce. So when they're illuminated by blue or ultraviolet light, it will actually glow green. Let me see if I can find you that photo. Um, it's really, really cool. No, I don't think I have the photo. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is really bad zoomed in, but it will glow green like that, that green one right there. So when you put a blue or ultraviolet light on the yellow spot stingray, it will actually biofluoresce to a neon green color. All right, the next one is the cow nose ray. So the cow nose ray is actually a species of eagle ray. Um, and they're named this because they have a very distinctive front of their face. So I'll show you this photo first to show you the bottom of their body. They look very silly. So that's the bottom of their body. The cow nose ray has those two kind of bumps on the front of their head there. So this is the bottom, that's its mouth, you can see their gills there. So that's the cow nose ray. I'll show you the top version as well. All right. So the cow nose ray is a species of eagle ray. They actually tend to gather in large groups. Um, they can sting, they do have a barb. And they can get to be about a meter in length. They're often mistaken as a shark when you're at the beach. So these guys will swim near the beach. Um, but what they'll do is they kind of get their, their wings will come out of the water a lot and it looks like a shark fin. So when that happens, a lot of people think it's a shark, um, but they're just little cow nose rays. Um, at a lot of aquariums, they actually have tanks of them where you can feed them. Um, they're venomous spines. So that barb is actually very weak. So they can sting, but it's a lot less venomous than your other species of stingrays. So they have a bar, but it's very, very weak, which is why people can put them in those little touch tanks and feeding tanks. All right, so now it's relative is the spotted eagle ray. So the spotted eagle ray are one of my favorite things that live in the ocean. Um, they're insanely cool. If you guys saw our post, we posted a video of them swimming. This is what a spotted eagle ray looks like. They're very, very large. They can have a wingspan of 10 feet. They're free swimming. You don't usually find these towards the bottom. So the spot eagle ray, the cow nose ray, you're not really gonna find them hanging out on the bottom unless they're eating. So the spot eagle ray, eagle ray will dig in the sand to eat, but you're usually gonna see them free swimming in the ocean, kind of like Mr. Ray in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Their movement is influenced by the tide. So they travel with the tide 
They have two to six venomous barbs on their tail. And they all have unique spots. So every spotted eagle ray's spots are like fingerprints. So no spotted eagle ray has the same spot pattern. They're all different. It's unique, just like our fingerprints. So those guys are really, really cool. All right. Now the next one we have is the mobula ray. So these guys are cool. They actually are the, they're, they're really cool because they kind of fly in a way. So here's a picture of them. The mobula rays are actually the species that are known for flying and breaching out into the air. So they don't actually fly, it's called breaching, but they'll get a big amount of power and force and speed and they'll soar into the air and crash down. It helps them hunt. Um, some people refer to mobula rays as flying rays or devil rays. It's the second largest species um, just after the manta ray. They don't have a stinger. They don't have a barb, so they are rays. Uh, most of these, so again, most of these species of mobula rays lack a stinger and they migrate. So you might have seen those pictures of a large group of stingrays and rays kind of swimming around in the ocean. A lot of them are going to be your mobula rays. So there are a few different types of mobula rays and a lot of them do mass migrations. All right, guys, let me ask you this next poll question. Can manta rays sting? What do you think? I'll show you guys a photo of a manta ray to help you guys make your guess. Do you think a manta ray can sting? All right, so this is a picture of a manta ray. Do you think these guys here can sting? Yes or no? What do you think? These are the largest species of rays. Do you think they can sting? Yes or no, can manta rays sting? I already actually told you the answer, so we'll see if you caught it. All right, guys, so manta rays actually don't sting. They do not have a barb. Um, your mobula rays, most of them do not sting. So there are many different species of mobula rays. Um, a manta ray is actually a species of that, surprisingly, um, but they don't have a stinging barb on them. So they can't sting. So here's another photo of them. This is actually what their gills look like in their mouth. So your manta rays are actually filter feeders. So think about some of your whales, your baleen whales. They take a, or like the whale shark, they take a, take a big mouthful of water and push it through these, uh, what you see inside of here to collect small things like krill and plankton. So your manta rays don't eat things towards the bottom. They eat things more towards the surface um, and in the water column, little tiny, tiny things. So again, guys, um, most of your rays do eat things on the bottom because their mouth is located on the bottom. Your manta rays eat, have their mouth located more towards the front, so they eat things more towards the front. They eat a lot of plankton and krill and small shrimp. So they eat small things. They are free swimming. Um, and they can have a 23-foot wingspan. So they're the largest species of rays that we have. 23-foot long wingspan. Remember in our bird lesson we talked about wingspan? That's very, very, very big. Um, they also do uh, do some types of migrations as well. So guys, I want to finish off with this last poll question for you guys. Are rays important? Yes or no? Do you? Th all right, you guys are all getting this one. This is awesome. So the answer is yes. Rays are absolutely important. Without them, there'd be a huge imbalance in the ecosystem. They're a very, very important part of the food chain. Um, if you guys watched the video, there's a video that we posted from Miss Alex's shark lesson. It talks about what happens if you take all the rays out of the ocean. Um, they're very important to keep that ecosystem in check. So rays are incredibly important. But unfortunately, just like most of our other organisms in the ocean, they are suffering. The manta ray species especially, um, a lot of people will actually hunt the manta ray um, specifically to take their gills. 
Um, and they kill a lot of manta rays for those gills, and it's not, not a good thing at all. Um, a lot of our other species of rays um, will actually get stuck in a lot of nets, so we have a lot of bycatch. Um, and another thing I want to tell you guys about quickly, um, so I believe in most places in the United States you cannot hunt or eat stingrays, I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that they actually use um, stingray meat as a substitute for a common um, other seafood type of um, dish. So if you guys know, know what scallops are, so scallops are very um, common at seafood restaurants. A lot of times they'll actually replace the scallops with um, stingray meat. So it's very common. Um, it's happened here in the Florida Keys before and people will order scallops and most people don't even realize that they're actually eating stingray meat um, and that's not good. Uh, so one way to tell if, if you guys like scallops and one way to tell to make sure that you're eating scallops, um, you can look it up online, but you have to look at the texture um, of that scallop itself. Make sure it's got all the fibers and grains in it. Um, the stingray meat has a lot less. Um, stingray meat is more solid and dense. And another thing, like if you guys like scallops, if the scallops you order come out in perfect circles, um, or if they're um, if, if if they come out in a perfect circle, then it's usually not scallops because scallops are all different shapes and sizes. Uh, usually, it's stingray meat if they use a little hole punch kind of thing to get that. Another thing to check to see if it's stingray meat or scallops is look at the level of it. Your stingray meat, if it's stingray, is actually going to go a little smaller. Both sides are not going to be the same height. One's gonna be a little bit bigger because of the shape of a stingray, right? So they are bigger as you go closer to the body and they get thinner as they go out to the tips of their wings. So scallops, um, they're perfect circles. You should be a little wary um, if they're not completely level in the same like heights, like same thickness, then also be a little wary as well. And also if it doesn't have a lot of those uh, fibers in it, then you should be conscious of it as well. Um, so that's just one example, um, but that actually happens with a lot of our seafood. A lot of seafood actually, they um, advertise it as one thing, but it's actually not. So definitely make sure that you're aware of the seafood that you're eating, make sure you're making conscious choices. Um, and also just make sure you're making good choices for our ray species. So even things like climate change and plastic pollution are affecting our rays. And again, guys, fishing, there's so many stingrays that I've seen where people have cut their tails off, um, which is not a good thing at all. So guys, we wanna be really thankful for these ray species. We need them. Without them, all of our ecosystems would not do very well at all. All right, guys, so I wanna thank you all for joining 